This is like raw cow dung, you know, hardly four or five days. So instead of throwing it out, we dump it over here. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. So, raw cow dung, no, this for five days old, six days old, no, you cannot use for vermi composting because once it starts composting, that methane and then it, it a lot of heat forms inside, about 70, 80 degrees, you can't even put your hand inside. The earth won't die with that. So what we do is like we make, like I do uh, this vermi composting in two ways. One, we do it in these beds over here can go inside later on and take a photo. These are beds, you can see there are about 15-20 beds. Each gives me around 2000 kgs a month. Mm. Each bed. It takes a month for it to be ready mm. or longer? Longer than that, but I think around... Uh, turn around but if you put more month. earthworms, you can get it done faster. Okay. So usually we use quite a bit of earthworms. So what's the so difference in the process? It's the same, but when we do it on the ground, oh. They, it, it gets composted faster in the earth. I've noticed that the earthworms increase, means I'm practically talking. I don't know why it's happening, but the earthworms increase a lot. So what we do is like, no, we, this is, this is cow dung that is about 20, 25 days old, 15, 20 days old. So you have to loosen it up this way. We have dumped the cow dung. Pardon? This is just pure cow dung. Pure, pure cow dung. In, in pure cow dung, in this there are leaves and all that. In pure cow dung, the earthworms multiply much faster. And we don't put slurry and all that. That is only for when they give trainings. No, some experts give trainings. So that time they tell all those things. Not me. We do it this way. So means you have to see when you dump the cow dung. No, you have to loosen it up a bit because other the other one find it difficult to move through. Okay, so like this is good enough for this. This is about 20 days old. It's not hot inside, and it's okay for them to cow dung. So. It's very simple, it's so simple to do, now. anybody can do it. And like people instead of buying a bed like this which costs 3000 rupees, you can do it on a normal flow. You can do it outside but where there's extra water like rains and all, you have to be careful. So I got this place here, actually I had about 50 cows before. But now I given I'm be restarting so I now kept some few goats and all which are sitting over there. That said there's few hens are there. Tell us about the goats. But tell me while digging this up, I mean. Making it loose, the earthworms will get. Uh, no, I tell you, we have not, not put the earthworms yet. Not yet. Oh, I kept okay. this specially for the demo. Oh, okay, okay. We have not put the earthworms. Now we do this once, na? But earthworms, earthworms are farmers' friends, na? They borrow the. I think so. The munta tasha. I don't know. Come, 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 it's so simple to do this, you know. So, make hole kara dara sa, dara sa, tap pe mara. Yeah, that's fresh cow dung. You should not, because once it starts composting, it releases a lot of heat. You can't even keep your hand inside when the composting, you know, the earthworm die with that. Methane? Methane is released, no, during the composting process, but that heat is generated during composting, which I've noticed my earthworms have died, actually, when I... Which is, when you, uh, you know, put refuse toilet waste that heat actually kills pathogens that is a good way human refuse can also be caused. actually the best thing to do this of now i have noticed it but my gober gas this biogas thing is spoiled at the moment you put this make a slurry the slurry that comes out is already composted uh -huh. That is the best for earth one, but at the moment I don't have it, so this is how we are doing it. Okay, so you can do the, use the uh, methane part also? The methane you can use that, that so ah. it's not wasted in this. Not wasted. So you get the methane gas for cooking or whatever, you can run a generator or whatever. Yeah. And then the, the slurry that comes out you can use and it's so good. It's already actually composted, you can use it as a compost. Okay. But we do this, so what we do is, we make, we, we this loosened the, this, made the pieces small. It can't have big lumps and all that, so and then you... We, this is the this mixture of all earthworms. So we introduce it. Mix it. This mixture You can see, you want to take some photo of earthworm. This thing, guy. Kali. Yeah. You can take some photo. We'll put a light. Light, light. That's why it's not there. So next. Uh, yeah. This is from Sir, the... Sir, no, let him do the demo. Put a torch. No, no, no. Put a... This no, it's okay, it's okay. Put a torch. Yeah, we can see the small... There is a lot now, no? Here, here, here. Is the vermi compost only? Here, there's so many. Oh, Fadi Sarma Sarma. Yeah, the earthworm will be down, no? So you're taking that only? That only. Only first time I had bought earthworm. After that, now they are... Because it's from the same lot. Yeah. You don't have to separate the... No. I'll tell you how they are... How it works out, like, you know? Hey, girl. Uh, so we put little bit, mix kela na sarva. We put it in these holes that we made. After 10 minutes you will find all the earthworms have gone into that and they start. 
and how they start now then after doing this now you have to cover it and make it dark ah. with a cloth ah. usually earthworm they start eating from the top and they go right go down, down. Okay. they go right down so now they will go down now because it's open on the top they don't like light that's why we not put too many lights over here they ah. like it little bit dark, dark okay. huh chori chori se kaam karta hai ओके ना एक दाखून घे नंतर कपडे घालायचे ना नंतर इफ यू डोंट पुट द क्लॉथ देन दे डोंट गो राइट इन सो व्हेन यू पुट द क्लॉथ ना वी विल डू दिस टुमारो सो आफ्टर अ फ्यू डेज व्हाट हैपेंस इज ना यू विल फाइंड लाइक यू विल गेट हे झालेले आहे ना किती झालेले आहे हे पण झालं सी यू कैन सी लाइक दिस इज फाउंड लाइक अ टी पाउडर यू नो ऑन द टॉप दिस इज एक्चुअली कंपोस्ट वमी कंपोस्ट ते हे आणना ते चाणनी हे मारायला ते पंजा पंजा आणना दिस इज लाइक टी पाउडर This is com vermi compost actually. So this is without doing and do nothing. You just nothing. That is that is the way we did it. That's it. Yeah, that's so the way we do it. Yeah, the tea and sometimes what we do is no like if you want it little this you one or two days before this no you just loosen it with a rake. Yeah. So then it gets nice and loose and it's easy to this like collect to collect. So one day you do the raking, the next day you can collect it. Uh-huh. So from this process, so this you said is about twelve days. No, this is a, we are continuously loading it over yeah, there. So, but anyway, you leave the so powder. So this was. I like leave it for a few days now. Days. This so was about fifteen days old. Also still, uh, also still. Yeah, the other one is still. The process is going on. It's yeah. not that you get vermi compost in one shot of the full thing. Yeah. You have to remove in this like every day. You remove two inches of compost. Hmm. You can make out when it's loose. No, it's like tea powder actually. Okay. You can. Yes. Whatever is ready is like. Yeah. In the so what we do is one day before that we just loosen the this this way. Yes, with the rake we just the collect that part yeah then we collect the, the top part the, the next day then the top part will again become that tea yeah, powder yeah then the top part this is already tea powder that yeah, we collect yeah. Yeah. so the earthworm then again they come up and they eat the uh, other so thing which is right down now yeah then they keep coming up wherever this food uh, so the last few days na then you have to see you know when that thing stops na the earthworms all concentrate on the bottom oh, okay. so then you ship them to a new bed uh, so they start from this process where you first introduce yeah the yeah about one and a half month one and a half month yes If you put more earthworms, now we put less earthworm just to show. Tomorrow I'll be putting another 15-20 kgs of the this mixture. So, the more earthworm you put, the faster it becomes. Where do you get earthworms from? And this See, amount I of powder. See, I first got powder? them from the north, somewhere from the north, and then I started this what is that? Cultivating. Which Cultivating. brand? Which which brand? It's called Icenia fetida. Fetida. Icenia fetida. They are meant for eating. They eat this like you put a local earthworm. They won't eat that very fast. Mm. Okay, that is yeah. different. That's a special variety which is used in. There is another variety I don't use that much, but I use this one because I've got good results with that. And I don't. People say that uh, this and all that. They they put DDT and they put ants and all. Kya laga na? Yeah, ants hi laga na. There are ants a few, and that is okay. It's tolerable. And uh, here you have the same earthworms. Same thing. And but this uh, but like no, this much. this your earthworm breathes faster on the floor this way. Yeah. Over there it's little bit slower, but here I get a big output from one. Like this, I'll hardly get maybe. Seven hundred, eight hundred, five hundred, seven hundred kilos. In each, I get two thousand kilos. Each bed. And where do you get so much cow dung from? Cow dung, see, I got my own cows ahead. Plus, yeah. I buy cow dung. At what rate? I buy eight thousand rupees a truck. Truck. A truck gives you about six tons, six cubic meters. Oh, people seven. sell. People sell. Truck actually, you have to keep on searching. You don't. You are not getting sufficient in this. So, actually, I am planning now a unit. Is more or less my. This is nearly done up now. I am going to start a unit in. Karnataka on the border of Goa. So here I'll be able to do about twenty-five, thirty thousand kilos. But from my research that I've done in the market, around two lakh to two and a half lakh kgs of earth, what is that? Vermi compost comes from outside the state, and they're selling at fifteen. See, I've started this at twelve rupees. My aim is that everybody should be able to afford it. I want to bring it down to eight or ten rupees, and within a year's time I will get it down. So I can only get that down. I'm not looking at big margins. I can get that down if I increase my production. Here in Goa, I'm trying to get the this cow dung. You're not getting so much. There is a limitation of if I get cow dung, I can do any amount. But is there any import uh, restrictions or something? No, there is nothing Kattar for Kattar this and all. No, nothing. no. On this, I I, I I tell them it's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> exactly, it is bullshit. Barrel per kilo me aata na maga. Bullshit. Nothing mixed. Yeah, it's only cow. This is pure cow dung. <laughs> it's the best thing if you can get pure cow dung. Whatever anybody says, now I have done it practically. Yeah. And I've done on a large scale. So, I think in the past three or four months, I've sold about ninety thousand kilos. And there's a market around. In and around I, I've, I cannot keep up with the demand, especially uh, in the rains. No, rains. it's a bit slow. Okay. But uh, Nestor, you uh, recently also got a coco peat. Coco peat. I'll show you all that machine so, over there. So your pot. So what I'm doing is that coco peat machine. I just brought it for coco peat thing. Yeah. Actually, in Tamil Nadu, I can get coco peat at one rupee fifty paisa kilo. 
another two or three rupees if I get a 30 ton truck, two or three rupees more I'll be able to get a truck to Goa. It, I will not be able to compete with that. So I brought that machine, okay, when I require cocoa peat, I can make cocoa peat. But if I change the, there's a screen in the bottom. If I change the size of the screen, I can compost anything. Like I can put a koti also, you know, a full the coconut, coconut shell I can pull inside. I can put pe big pieces. I've got a 20 HP motor. I can put thick pieces of wood. I can put all the leaves possible when we chop our trees and all. Kind of it thing. gives you one inch. That screen is about one inch screen. So it gives me one inch, which is, see, when you use like, you know, when you chop it like a powder, no? fine, like a powder, fine. it compresses. The earthworms cannot move in properly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people have noticed that. It's better to have pieces uh, than to have powder of anything. That time the earthworm move in very easily. You notice any time when the, it's like a powder, it gets compressed very easily. They are just plain leaves, like they just compact and it comes back in shape. But if it, if you make the leaves into powder, it will remain and stick together like it will this like. So earthworm don't work well in that. It's so simple, like I thought it was a big thing. It's nothing great in this year. Just no, I want to say your so your potting mix will be some vermicompost. I'll tell you, I'll show you your potting mix how I make. I'll take you all down over there. It's a very simple way to make potting mixture. Usually, you see potting mixture. Now you should see that your soil doesn't store too much water also, and it doesn't give away water extra also. You know. So what I do is I use about 25%. It works for me. Some experts and all. There are a lot of agriculture experts. I'm not an expert. There are a lot of experts around. I'm not an expert. But whatever I do, I do. I grow much more than most other people. So what I do is I use about 25% of what is that vermi compost. I use about 25% of of cocoa peat. I use 25% of river silt. River silt you can is very good in nutrients, but river silt has got a problem. It compresses. Water doesn't flow through that. Mm -hmm. So about chicol type. Chikol. So about not even 20, maybe 10, 15 percent. Then I use uh, vermi compost. Then I use this something called. I get some waste. This farmyard waste, na. We make small pieces and we mix it with that. Like leaf leaves, leafy right? waste and all. So that you gives you that you make as this and all that whatever. Put a humid, na. I don't go into the technical thing that my son will do because he knows. Yeah. I, I'm not bothered also about those things. I'm not bothered about that. But so uh, you, you know scientifically quite. I know I, I'm a science guy only, yeah, but I don't. I so, said why break my head over that yeah, thing. But especially Although, the names and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't want to waste my time in that. I want my thing is everything should get get sold and all. That's what I have to run my farm. I've got six to seven people working here. My just my salaries are one lakh a month. Forget about the eggs. So I have to get out my salaries. Every year I have to get out 12 lakhs. So most of it I get out from my mango and my cashews. But this is a new thing and this is... I, I want everybody... See, people are selling for 15, 20 rupees. I want to drop it down to 7 or 8 rupees. So everybody can start using this. What is that? No? Stop using chemicals as far as possible. Yes. So like I was saying, 25% of all those four things. So that gives you a mixture of say 100 kilos. In that you add about 1 kilo... I don't use 1 kilo. I use half kilo of rock phosphate. Which is allowed in... In this, what is that? In organic. organic, this. Then I use about half kilo of muriate of potash. I use about three, four kilos of neem cake. Mm -hmm. That gives you little of mustard cake. That gives you little bit of nitrogen. We mix all that together. Then I spray. There is. Then you are allowed to use some micronutrients like some chelated, some some calcium. I use something called dolomite because sometimes our soils are acidic. When our soils are too acidic, like if the pH is five or four point five, no, then trees don't grow. So you get optimum growth like I've, I've at least I've noticed between 5.5 to 7. Of they grow very well. I got a pH meter and everything. That much I know. I'm little bit of science. I'm actually an engineer. So it's plenty. No, no, this is false humility. That has got so much of nutrients. So, so that everything it got no, but plus over that. I use a, in, in organic this, it is allowed to use micronutrients. So I give a spray of micronutrients. I use a company of, uh, it's called RCF, Rashtriya Chemicals and Fertilizers. I use a spray of, it's called Microla. So I dilute that spray and I spray it and make it wet. Then that mixture is mixed up and that is your potting mixture. So simple. Anybody can do it. But you should use fresh water river silt. Huh? And fresh water sand, not your Doria Cheni. No. Karsanasta. So and actually, frankly speaking, you're not even allowed to remove river sand, but Correct. when this moves close to mine, so I don't do it for commercial purpose. Correct. I use it for myself. Okay. Yes, sir, so if uh, any of us are growing things in uh, pots, pots, so then one can get your potting mix. Potting right? mixture. But if somebody has a little bigger garden patch, yes. uh, can they take some, like how yeah, so they we make Yeah, so we make a, this like a mixture of this, you know. See, 
to improve the soil quality yes. of that place. You can so, use this, you know, I'll tell you what, and plus one more thing that I use over this, it's called a bio consortium of bacteria, you know. Okay. There are many useful bacteria in the soil. There are thousands of bacteria. Cow dung has got that. But I've got somebody who has isolated about 13 or 14 different bacteria. That bacteria has got that nitrogen fixing capacity, then it's got that PSA potassium, then it breaks your, there's micronutrients in the soil. You know, most of the, there are nutrients in your soil. But that soil, your nutrients cannot be absorbed by the plants. It has to be broken down. The so there are those bacteria. Everything about organic is organisms. The organisms have to break it down in their soil. If your soil doesn't have nutrients, you put any amount of organisms. You put this, it's not going to work. Your soil has to have those specific nutrients. So the first thing that you should do is you know, before so you do anything, no? be yeah. Before you do anything, no? Before you do anything, first you have to test your soil. There is actually a way to test the soil. I could show you all, but I'll just show you all in this, huh? okay? So what you do is, no? You make, you like I'm talking about. If you want to do your mango field or something, no? You make about a 30 centimeter hole, okay? I'm just showing you a small hole. You make a 30 centimeter hole. You take four five samples from this of soil, cross section this way. Okay, one, two, three samples. You do this in 10 places of your farm. So you collect some certain amount of soil. Okay, uh. you collect some certain amount of soil. Okay. Then what you do is you make it into four parts. You mix it, you make it into four parts. You take two opposite parts, dump the other and that is the soil that you have to give to. So you get a sample of everywhere. But for, for your rice and all, you can go only up to about six or eight inches, 10 inches because the rice is a shallow crop. Whereas your mangoes, you take a sample about 30 inches. Okay. I'll be doing the videos, no? then we'll post like everybody can learn, even vermi composting. Making very simple videos of grafting and vermi. Everybody should learn, no? means why yeah. simply get this like. Because, uh, you know, many of us might be doing terrace gardening yes. or kitchen gardening or something. So one is to start off, straight away taking a potting mix and start. Yeah, but the potting mixture after some time, see this is a very small ecosystem, they get exhausted, exhausted no? Exhausted, yeah. So, no, you, get, so you, have to, you have to know also, and then the potting mixture that you're taking, we are saying we use some soil in that. Has your soil been tested? You should know what is in the soil, no? And there are certain this like, I don't want to go into that, I know more or less, but like mangoes require certain amount of nutrition depending on the age. Cajus require certain amount of nutrition. So it depends on, you have to check your soil basically and then you have to accordingly add this. And where do you give this soil testing? Uh, I actually, I got a friend in Tamil Nadu also who does it for me. Okay. They do a... Tell us in Goa and... In, in Goa, I see here. I you I go think. to KV, you know, Kishchi Vidyan Kendra. And how long is the process? Take your soil, they give I you the result. I think within 8 or to 10 days, they give you the result. 8 to 10 days. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it takes that long, but maybe they have a procedure to do, yeah. no? Or you can take it to your zonal agriculture office yeah. and they will do the soil testing for you. Okay. But it's better to get, you have to take uh, this hole, you have to take cross section soil and not from one place. Take it from 5-6 different places. Yeah. Mix it up, make four of this, dump two and keep two. I'll put the video out how to do it. Do you I'll use uh, the goat uh, droppings also? Yeah, I use the goat droppings also. Yeah. What happened though, goat droppings sell for 20 bucks a kilo, no? so why waste it on this? I see. Oh, why, why are they so expensive? People uh, are buying it for that. No, I, didn't, I don't go into all that. Yeah. If you are buying, buy it. Uh, I've seen, you know, <laughs> when they stop buying at 20, I'll drop it to 15 rupees. I used to go to the Gala's offer, they What they say, no? goat so droppings, no? they release their nutrients very slowly. Mm. But actually, if you go to see, no? The amount of nutrients in that, if you check out, like, no, you, there'll be hardly 1% of nitrogen. Like, if you put urea, you'll get 46% of urea in that one kilo. To compete with urea, you have to use 46 times of this to make one kilo. But the thing is, this has got a lot of organisms. Those organisms work into the soil and they release those, like, they, it breaks the ion chain. Then there are so many things that these nutrients, this insect, sorry, not the insect, the microbes do. So it's all about microbes in the soil. That's why they say your soil health has to have a lot of microbes and all. No, if you keep on using all these yeah. pesticides and your chemical fertilizer and all, it kills the this yes. in the soil. 